Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name is David, and this is the first video for BrainPower Motorsports. Recently, I've been doing a lot of work on this car that I purchased a few months ago. It's a 1995 240SX that uh, originally came from Florida and is now located up here in Canada with me. When I first got it, it was kind of like a barn find. There were a lot of issues. It was a track dedicated car, but it had, I don't wanna say it was abused, but it just, it had, it had some problems. Yeah, I mean, th there were a lot of issues with it, but on the flip side, I got myself a drift car here, fully caged and ready to go. And uh, hey, it's got an S15 engine swapped into it. So this is the SR20 DT black top, um, which is going to be pretty awesome for power. I just picked up a Link ECU recently that I'm going to use to run the whole thing, and it's going to be a hell of a lot of fun. But first things first, I need to do some work on the intake manifold. Okay, so when I was looking into intake manifolds for the SR20, I came across a few different options. They were all kind of similar prices, unless you wanted to go with like the Plasma Man, which was, uh, I mean, Canadian dollars, I was looking at about 1800. Um, and I didn't want to spend that much on this car. I'm trying to keep it kind of a budget drift car, but still make it, uh, Make it work really well and i mean I, I would rather spend the money on the link ecu that's going into it so uh, i made some concessions and went with a different uh, intake manifold and in this case it is the ebay special mp boosted uh, i didn't order it off of ebay i um i did order it straight from their website i was hoping i would get a bit of a better experience um but yeah shipped out to me uh and i got it just sitting right down here so let's, uh, let's take a look at it. It's painted black or anodized, I'm, I'm not really too sure, but it's got some nice welds on it. Nice billet fuel rail. It's got one inlet up there, another one right there, and then the outlet's actually on the, the bottom of it here. Uh, a spot for, what's this, a little bracket for the throttle. Here's the actual 76 millimeter throttle body. This thing, this thing's huge. Let's be honest, that thing's huge. And uh, funny enough, I'm not actually going to be using it at all for the car. Uh, I'm going with a drive-by wire system instead. I'm going to do an electronic throttle once again. I've got a Link ECU. I may as well use it properly. Uh, so anyways, I've uh, I found an adapter plate that's going to go onto the end of the throttle body and uh, convert over to an 80 millimeter Bosch throttle body. Um, but anyways, let's get back to the actual manifold. So here's the mating surface and the underside. There's a spot for the idle air control valve. And that's where um, you would attach uh, a hose barb there for the actual um, air supply to it. And then four nipples there for the vacuum lines that come off of it. So you're going to have Oh, probably like brake booster, um, PCB system maybe, and then blow off valve and uh, boost control solenoids. Those are the ones. Uh, I'm sure you might want to tap into it if you want to put a, a boost gauge on there or something. Anyways, okay. So uh, looking down here, this is the coolant channel that comes out of the cylinder head. And there's a nipple that been put onto there. Uh, now one of the things I noted when I first got this, let me just make this a bit more clear. So, oh, of course that's on there tight. Um, <laughs> the reason it's on there tight is because I actually put some sealant, uh, it's kind of hard to see in here, but there's some white sealant on there. Uh, coolant's going to be running through that passage, so you want to make sure it's sealed properly. Um, so that's my recommendation. It still it seemed a bit loose in the end, so I wanted it on there tight. So yeah, throw some sealant onto that. Anyways, that feeds into this hose here, goes into this, I want to call it collector. Let's get that into the light there so you can see. So one large end, 
the hose barb down there, and then two spots for your engine coolant sensors that thread right into that. Um, what else came with it? We got some pieces, these are dash sixes that go on to the actual fuel rail. Uh, there's one that's already screwed onto this end, and then yeah, one goes over doo -doo, right there. It's a little blurry, but that's the one inlet. And then on this side here is an outlet. Uh, what else? O-ring, that's for sealing the throttle body if you go with that stock one. So yeah, and uh, some, some hardware that also came with it. Uh, one thing to note though, this is not stainless steel hardware and I am a fan of stainless steel. So I'm going to be swapping those out. I've got some uh, bolts here. I'll go through and find what I need. Okay, so the next thing to look at is the actual uh, stock intake manifold. And this is kind of important because I want to illustrate the importance of the coolant hoses that are underneath it. Um, I've, I have done a little test fit with this and I've noticed some problems. So that's, that's kind of why I'm doing this, yeah, let's call it educational video, because I want to make sure you guys understand what you're getting into if you buy one of these eBay specials. Um, so the top half of the intake manifold has the throttle body. There are two uh, lines here. One goes to the blow off valve and the other one's going to go to your boost control solenoid. This large line right here, that one's actually feeding right into the idle air control valve system. Um, so solenoid usually sits up there electronically controlled and lets a certain amount of air into the engine when you're sitting at idle. Back here we got this is another barb that's going to feed into the brake booster system. And then the final one is the PCV system, which goes right underneath there. So, let's uh, take that top half off. Okay, looking at the bottom half here, got four holes for the side feed fuel injectors. And then, if I pull this, so let's just take this off completely. Right down in there, underneath that, um, that entrance, you'll see there's a coolant passage. And that coolant passage goes straight into the intake manifold. So there's another one on the MP Boosted right there. And this is the stock one. So first thing to note is the reduced area that the coolant is flowing through. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm not sure what effect that actually has on the coolant flow. Um, but I kind of came to the conclusion that it probably won't matter too much because when the, when the engine is cold, there's gonna be a lot more coolant flowing through here, um, but it's only to the heater core and the throttle body. And when the engine actually gets hot, well, everything is gonna be going through the radiator instead. So I don't, I don't think this is gonna to be too big of an issue, but it is something to note. So anyways, coolant goes into there, feeds through the bottom of the intake manifold, and then goes to the two sensors. So one of these go, the blue one here, this goes to the ECU and tells it the temperature. And this small one underneath it, that one is actually for the gauge on your speedo or cluster gauge, whatever you wanna call it, instrument panel. That's the one that tells you how hot the engine is. Um, this bung or nipple, whatever you want to call it, right beside it, that is the one that's actually going to the throttle body. And the last part, man, this thing gets heavy when you're holding it. Uh, the last part is this large nipple, which actually feeds, just set that down, feeds down into this uh, cluster of hoses. So large one right there, that's what it gets fed into. So remember, coolant's coming out from here going through the intake manifold and down into this hose. Goes through there and it splits off right down in there um, to the heater core, which I don't have on this car. Um, but for most of you, you probably have your heater core. So it goes through there into the heater core, circles through it and comes back out, feeds up into this hose, and then goes down into the water pump. Uh, this here, this is the return from the throttle body. Um, so that's, that's where that one goes, but there's also one other spot where it splits off down under here. And this one goes straight into the thermostat housing. So when the engine's cold, 
the thermostat's closed, radiator, there's nothing flowing through it, and uh, there's actually coolant coming through here and back into the water pump. But when the thermostat opens up, it's going to push against that, seal off that passage, and then the only water that's, or coolant that's going through the system here is now coming through this spot from the heater core and the throttle body. Uh, but the majority of the coolant flow is now through the neck there, and it's going to be going through, well, I don't have it on the car right now, but it would be going through the radiator there. So, uh, I mean, long story short, I, this is why I don't believe the size of that coolant passage on the intake manifold is going to make a huge difference, but until I run the car, well, which is probably going to be a few months away, I'm not going to really be able to tell if there's a difference. Anyways, let's get to fitting this manifold on. Um, now, like I said, I've already done a bit of a test fit on here and I've noticed some issues. And uh, the first one, before I even try and put it on here, is going to be this nipple right here, which I think is for the brake booster. If I try to put that manifold on here, it actually clashes right here on this hard tube. So the first thing I can say is this does not work. There's not enough space for it down there. But let's just take that off. Actually, let's, let's take those two off and that should give enough clearance. And, uh, and I'll put this on the car. So I've just got it resting in the car right now. And I mean, first things first, it does look really good. I, I like the black. I've always been a fan of black in engine bays. And um, it, it looks a hell of a lot better than that stock intake system, especially with all the peripherals on it. You know, they've done a nice job hiding everything underneath. So uh, let's just try and get a look under there. It's a little hard to see, but the idle air control valve sits under there. Um, and it looks like there should be just enough space to actually, to actually put the solenoid back onto it. Um, but you can see at the back there, there's the two barbs and you can see where that hard pipe is that would have been interfering with the other one. So that's just something to note. Um, you know, one of the solutions here, let me just, just take this off for a second. One of the solutions for those barbs and uh, and hitting this hose might be to remove this bracket. Um, and then if you do that, you can probably pull the hoses down just a little bit into the engine bay, but even still, you got the starter there, so there's not a lot of space. I'm not actually sure what is going to be the best solution for that one. Um, in my case, because this is a track dedicated car and it's running that Link ECU system, I've eliminated the heater core. I'm eliminating the coolant passages into the throttle body, which means I am going to try and eliminate all of these hoses down here. So I'm uh, currently working on an idea where um, I kind of reroute this stuff and get it to uh, tie right back up into, I'm going to get it to tie right back up into that barb right there. So. You know, in the next month or so, I should have that system worked out and I'll make sure to post a video so you guys can see what it looks like. Um, but in the meantime, I still want to show you how it fits with the stock layout. So, going to install this onto this hose down here and, uh, and I'll kind of get it mocked up. Okay, with the collector on there, can see it comes off that hose and this hose right here is going to tie into where are we it's going to tie into that passage right there so i just wanted to show you this before i actually get the manifold on because it's going to be a little tricky to see it underneath okay so i've got the manifold back in now and i've tried my best to uh to get a bit of light down in here so you can see what's going on so right back there Here's the collector, and this is the hose that's coming off, and it's really difficult to see, but it's attached right to that nipple that was threaded onto the intake manifold. Um, it is pretty tight. This is right up between the thermostat housing, and I'd worry about this rubbing um, and, you know, creating a leak or something. So one of the things I'd recommend if you're going to try and put this onto the stock system 
is that you shorten that really long or that really big hose that's under there. I would shorten it a little. That would be my recommendation just to get that hose to fit a little bit better and, um, and to avoid, where are we? And to avoid any uh, rubbing down there. That would be my one recommendation um, along with figuring out those nipples back there for the air supply. So I hope this review helps you out a bit. Um, I hope it helps you understand how to install it onto the stock, the stock SR20 and possibly retain those hoses. Like I said, I'm going to be doing a lot of work and customizing this and eliminating all of these hoses under here. Um, but for most of you, that's probably not what you want to do. So use the collector, uh, maybe shorten that large hose and it should fit pretty well for you. And then you just, uh, you might need to get creative with these nipples that, uh, that go underneath because like I said, there's going to be a little bit of a clash there. Uh, the other thing, I haven't tried to actually install the idle air control valve underneath. Um, when I look though, it looks like there should be enough space for it. Um, but yeah, the last thing I want to go over is, uh, when I ordered this product from MP Boosted, it came with no instructions. And I know this is a common complaint from other people on other platforms, 2JZs, uh, the RB25, other engines like that. Um, I have seen posts on the forums where people are complaining that there are no instructions for it. And to make matters worse, I could not find any how-tos on installing it into this car. So that is the motivation behind this post because when I first, uh, when I first got it, this bracket here, if you actually look underneath, there's actually a spot where this bracket is supposed to sit. And then the collector has a mating hole right there for a bolt. You can see it's already marked up because I was trying this earlier. And it's supposed to sit like that. And like I said, this bracket here goes right there. Unfortunately, when you put this into the car, this bracket here clashes with that hose, that hard line right there. So, not too sure why they have supplied this one. It does not work and it kind of, it, it made me go crazy for a bit while I was trying to figure that out. So that's it, I hope you found this helpful. And if you did, please give this video a like, hit the subscribe button. I'm just starting out this channel right now, but I've been doing this for a long time. And I'm gonna be showing you a lot more how-tos on uh, both the Nissan here, as well as this car that I haven't really introduced, the Evo. It's a 99 Evo. So, you know, we'll, we'll get into that in future videos. Um, but for now, yeah. Let me know in the comments if there's anything else you want to know about this intake manifold and uh, happy modding.